Hi, this is Chris Hickman from Decision First. I gave a series of lectures recently over the past couple of years on uh, geocoding and location intelligence. And one of the biggest questions that I received from my audiences was, how do I take my business data and geocode the data so that I can represent the data on the map? Well, whenever we look at data, data is typically represented as locations, so street addresses, city states, and zips. But whenever we talk about a, a standard location system, or a geospatial system like an ESRI type system, we need a series of shape data. So either points or lines or polygons or some type of spatial data that gives us information about the, the data that we're looking at. So what I wanted to do today is show you how we can take data, our customer data, and geocode that data to place it on a map. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into uh, our business object system and you can see here that I have web intelligence that I've brought up on a um, uh, through a BI4 system so what I've done is I've used our eFashion data and from that eFashion data I've generated a Webby report that gives us store name city and state and with these three columns I can export this data to a CSV file that I would then convert to a, an Excel spreadsheet that I can use inside of a, a geocoding system like uh, the ones provided by Esri and that's the example that I'm going to use is the the geocoding system from Esri. Esri is a, a, a company out of uh, Southern California that provides a wide range of geospatial capabilities uh, both desktop and server based that allow a fully functional geospatial type system. So I've run this and you can see that I just ran this a little while ago so less than a minute ago I'm going to go into my data access tab I'm going to click export data and export query one. I'm going to export query one first of all to my desktop here and I can only export this as a CSV so I'm going to save this off as a CSV okay and then I will minimize my screen and you can see here that I have my CSV file here I'm going to open, the, open this up in Excel so now here's my CSV file and you can see that I've got the same store name, city, and state columns that I had in my other data so I'm going to go File, Save As, and just save this as the standard XLSX. And I'll drop this again on my desktop, and instead of a new document, we'll call this eFashion. Okay, so now I'll save this. There's our new eFashion XLSX. I'm going to copy this file. I've got a virtual image set up that's, that has all of my Esri applications on it, along with a few other applications. So what I'm going to do... So I'm just going to copy this file into that location. So there's my eFashion XLSX file. I'm going to open up the ArcMap application. I've already opened one up for sake of time here. So I've created in my ArcMap application here a basic map showing the, the basic street map from Esri. So you can see right now I'm zooming in on the continental US, which is where the focus of my study is. Because if you go back and look at our data, it has to do with cities and states all across the US. So we, are, are, we go from Texas, Massachusetts, Illinois, Colorado, on down uh, California, D.C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data and I'm going to geocode it. So what I've got to have is a geocoder. And typically, uh, companies will sell a geocoding system. Like with Esri, you can have their, a, a subscription to their ArcGIS online system. And with that subscription, you get access to a geocoder that will take that address information, geocode it into a series of latitudes and longitudes, which you can then use on the map. Or um, if you're a business analyst customer, your standard data subscription that you typically get every summer, uh, usually every July or so, will have an updated geocoding system that you can use. All you have to do is copy that to a location that's accessible to your geocoding tools uh, in the desktop system and you can use that to geocode your data. So in ArcMap here, I want to take that same data and I want to geocode it. I'll go to Catalog. And in my Arc Catalog here, I'm going to open up Toolboxes. I'm going to go down into my geocoding tools. And I'm going to open up the Geocoding Addresses tool. So when I open this up, we have a couple of required options here. Um, the input table is the, the table that we pulled in from the, uh, the ESRI system, or the um, ArcGIS system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pull in the Webby data that we've got here. So eFashion XLSX, click Add. And it's asking me what sheet within that XLSX I want to use. I'm just going to pull a new document and click Add. 
Okay, so now that's our source data, so that's the data that we want to geocode. The input address locator, this is our geocoding, or the, the geocoding data. So this is the, the very large geocoding file that we use to, uh, to look up our different addresses, in this case our cities and states, to pull out a latitude and a longitude. So I'm going to navigate out to my location where I know I've kept my geocoder. I'm going to go to this file share, into my USA geocoding service, and you see I have a range of geocodes here. So here I'm going to use the city-state geocoder. Now with this, with this geocoder, I'm going to click Add. So now it's read in the fields that I have in this city-state geocoder. So you see the input fields here, city and state, correspond to the field names that we've got in our file. So uh, I'm going to select city for city and state for state. Now once we do the geocoding, we need an output file. So you can see here that by default it's trying to drop it into a file-based geodatabase, a GDB file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this just to go to file-based database. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to change this to efashion.shp and it says it already exists. So let me change this to efashion data and we can use that. And I'll click OK. So now it's going to look up all the addresses, every single record that's in that data it's going to look up all those addresses against the geocoded data and it's going to plot that on the map. So now you see that the points are now overlaid on my street data here. So you can see San Francisco, Los Angeles, Dallas, um, Houston, Denver, uh, actually it's Colorado Springs just south of Denver, uh, Chicago, Washington. So all the points that we had in our data are now represented on the map. So now let's go look at what happened with this data. If we right click eFashion data and pick open attribute table. You can see that we've got the same data that we had in our original file. So let me open this window out a little bit. So you can see we have at the very end of our shape file here store name, city, and state. And onto that data it's appended information about that shape. So it's matched the data. So we have arc city, arc state, and then the matched address here gives us that. Here's our latitude and longitude. So that's what it's using to plot those points on the map. And then it's giving us information about the shape here. So you can see the shape is an, a, a point. Then we have status, score, and match type that tells us more information about how it matched. And so with the score here, this tells us how accurate the, the selection is. So it looks like it's determined that with 100% accuracy, it's found each of the points on the map. Okay. So now we can do an, uh, an information on each of these points. So we can see if I touch the one in Colorado Springs, I have the latitude and longitude here for Colorado Springs, so we can use that. If I go to Dallas and touch that point, you can see we have that as well. So we can go to any of these points. So now I can close this. I can close this map. I can go over to where I've stored this data. So instead of this directory, we'll go up one more to Administrator. So you can see that we have eFashion data now. So with these shape files, a shape file is typically are typically represented by multiple files. So you can see here that in the eFashion uh, e data, we have an SHP file. That's what we typically associate with a shape file. But in conjunction, or SAP uses uh, other files like the XML file, the SBX file, the SBN, PRJ, and DBF. The nice thing is with this DBF file, we could copy this file out to a different machine. So if I copy this back to my desktop and I open this up and say Notepad, well, it doesn't really represent that data very well. Let's open it up in Excel. So now you can see if I open this up in Excel, it's pulled in that DBF file into Excel and it's now giving us our latitudes and longitudes. Now we're able, now that we've geocoded that data, we're able to take this data and use it in any type of mapping system we'd like. So if we wanted to use it in something like uh, like the integration kit from APOS, where we have the ability to do that. We can also use it from uh, with a tool like Synagon GMAPS plugin, because instead of having it geocode the cities and states on the fly, we can now just use the, the geomap at the geocoded latitudes and longitudes. So it'll save us a lot in performance and it'll save us a lot in um, in the time that it takes to render our dashboards. So that's all I wanted to show you on the geo on geocoding uh, standard address data. Feel free to contact me for more information. Uh, here's my information here. 
So if you wanted to uh, drop me an email, chris.hickman at decisionfirst.com, or you can follow me on Twitter, chickman 72 uh, I'd be glad to answer questions. You can also find Decision First on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and um, on Facebook.